In this question, we have a sample of antimony. And we're told it has an average relative atomic mass of 121.86. We're then provided with the isotopes that make up this sample, but we're not told the relative abundance, and we're going to have to figure that out. So the two isotopes we have are 121 and 123. Those are our two mass numbers. So we're going to go about this question the same way we have for our other questions, but we're going to end up working backwards from the answer of the average relative atomic mass to figure out the relative abundances. Okay, so let's start by writing an equation for the average relative atomic mass. So usually we start our equation by writing average equals. But in this question, we know the average. We've been told the average relative atomic mass is 121.86. So I'm actually just going to start out by putting that right in as my average value. So 121.86, that is my average. Okay, now I need to multiply my isotopes mass numbers by their relative abundances. So I've got 121, and I'm gonna multiply it by the relative abundance. However, we don't actually know that yet. So I'm gonna give it a symbol X for that relative abundance. Okay, now I need to add the mass number of the second isotope, 123, multiplied by the relative abundance. Now again, I don't know this one. So I could give it a symbol like Y, but then I'm gonna have two unknown variables, X and Y in my equation. Now there's something else, a trick that I can do. Since I know that these two relative abundances here are gonna add up together to give me 100, I know that if the first one is x, the second one is going to be 100 minus x. So I'm going to give the second isotope a symbol of 100 minus x, since I know that together those will add up to give me 100. So I'm going to do 100 minus x for the relative abundance of my second isotope. And then lastly, I just need to divide by 100. Okay, so we've done the tricky part, which is setting up our equation. Now we just need to follow this through to get our answer. So first I'm gonna multiply by 100 on both sides to get rid of that 100 on the bottom of my fraction. So that's gonna give me 12,186. And then I'm going to uh, copy out the rest of my equation. But I'm going to multiply out my brackets here. So I had 123 times 100. So that's 12,300 minus 123x. OK, so for my next step, I'm going to subtract 12,300 from both sides. because that will cancel out there. And when I write out this next line, I'm going to combine those numbers. So on the left, when I do minus 12,300 plus 12,186, I'm going to get minus 114. And on the right-hand side, I'm doing 121x minus 123x, which is minus 2x. So my last step is going to be just to divide by minus 2 on both sides, so that will cancel out. So to get my answer, it's going to be 114 divided by 2, which gets me 57 for x. So we can add that up here. So if x was 57, and then for the second one, I know that it adds up with 57 to make 100. So the second one must be 100 minus x, which is 43%. So let's put those in now to test them. So as you can see, the setup for this works exactly the same as for the previous problems, but we do have a bit more algebra to work through to figure out our answer.